Hello everyone, I'm back with another video, so I'm hoping you guys can hear me. I lowered my voice because if I go a little higher, it's going to start ringing and it's going to hit my, my eardrum and it becomes very, very annoying and it's something that I don't like my videos having is that ringing sound. So, so yeah, so today's still Friday and um, I hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, one, I have a, a Thor's hammer coming in. It's a steampunk Thor's hammer, but the reason that I got it, I've, I've had about a, I've had about seven or eight Thor's hammers in the last um, four years or something like that. And um, this one I really like because it's on a cord and not on a metal chain. The thing about metal chains is if they are not actual silver chains they will actually rub off and turn your skin green and that's not something that I like to have on my skin so this one had a cord so I'm really excited about getting that um, there's, it's supposed to start at 5 and end at 8 so I'm going to be actually keeping a watch on my um, on my thing because I don't want to miss my Amazon driver. Another thing that I'm getting, uh, it'll probably arrive next week, it may arrive the week after next, I don't know, but it's my Skald Hus statue. This is a wooden statue and the reason I chose a 100% wooden statue is because I wouldn't have to worry about it breaking or whatever. So these are hand carved statues and when I actually get her in, I'm actually going to put down the seller's name and a link to her shop. So if you're interested in buying any of her goods, you can go ahead and do it. There's also another seller I'm going to go with. I went with her before. I have yet to get the items. This is Prince, so she hand paints these, um, these gods and she sells them. And... Um, she has one for, I see here, I think one of them is um, um, Sol or Man, it's it's a, I think it might be, I think it probably is Suna, but then she has a really nice print of the goddess Hell, and I'm like, I gotta buy those. So I will actually be purchasing those prints uh, next month, and I'm real excited about having them when I get the prints, now the prints I have are Egyptian gods and they're actually going to be on, I'm going to put one in the living room and one out in the hall and a couple other places. Um, the kicker is trying to find the frame for them because I do want to put them up uh, in frames because I think they will look a whole lot more nicer. I'm just doing this to bring art into the apartment because right now I have Mr. Poster over there, and there's no art in the living room or the hallway or nothing. So I really want to have art in my apartment. And I'm really looking forward to actually getting the prints and putting them up. So that's what's going on. So um, I had talked to people on, um, there's a, a an emo I think that's pronounce it. It's a it's an app, um, and I was talking to them about this thing I'm going through. Um, my mother passed away. A, yesterday was nine months, and I do miss her a lot. I I I I can't tap her wisdom, and even though. There was a lot of things that she believed in that I did not believe in, and she did not want to hear anything that was different. I really do miss her. I do miss her. I miss her all the time. Um, and so I was going through this period of time where I didn't know what my path was. I have multiple channels, and this is all a byproduct of me not me uh, my worry that if I get too deeply involved in a certain path 
that my mother is going to say something and I mean, or really give me a hard time about it. I know three years ago, um, or three and a half years ago, my mother made a comment that made me really look at her and she was, oh, I can't believe that you're a heathen. Um, and it shocked me that she had said this. And it was, I could tell she was disappointed in my religious choices, but she, you know, she was like, oh, I can't believe you're a heathen and everything. And when this nice lady had mailed me um, a package of Norse figures, my mother did not like them in the house, but they were a gift and she did not make a comment about them. I, out of all those uh, little figures that she gave me, I only have uh, the goddess uh, Freya. Um, I threw away the rest because um, my biggest worry was that they were going to get um, damaged and they were going to break. They're made of Kermanic, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, and basically they're fire kilt, and, but I kept one because I wanted, um, I wanted, uh, I wanted Frigga on my altar when we moved. Oh, sorry, I should have kept them all, but I was worried they were going to shatter when we moved. So, um, so what I'm doing in effect is I'm actually ordering uh, wooden statues of the gods to replace the chromatic ones that I have. And actually, there's actually, um, uh, sellers that do sell the ones I have and um, I'm going to look into actually purchasing some um, at some point in the future but I definitely want to try to stick with the wooden statues and not get the ones that break easily. So I was really thinking long and hard about what was I going to do. I mean I have Greek figures, I have I have Egyptian figures in my apartment um, and I'm really seriously thinking about putting them away because I wanted to have a giant um, altar. So one of the huge reasons I'm putting them away is I plan on to um, move my dresser over here and move my um, and move my uh, television over there. But uh, that's going to take me some time, and for me to be able to do it, I gotta put, I gotta put the statues someplace where they'll be safe. Um, but I am I do plan to put them in storage or put them actually. There's a little room over there um, that I can use that I will definitely definitely use. Um, so I have settled on uh, Norse uh, paganism, not Norse polytheism. And there, I'll explain this. We don't know a lot about the Norse. We know a lot more about the Norse than we did about 20, 30 years ago, but we don't know um, a lot about the Norse. Or we don't know as much about the Norse as say we know about the Greeks and the Romans and the Egyptians. Um, everything is everything that we do know about the Norse is all based on archaeological finds and also on what managed to be preserved by Christian writers. So that is what um, we do know. So, um, so I'm practicing what is known as Teutonic Wicca. And the reason for this is because I like the uh, freedom of the path and I like the fact is that I can easily ignore the racist aspects of heatherny, which is a vocal minority and not a majority. However, if I do ever go to a heathen ritual, I will follow the ritual of the group. So what I do in my room as far as how I venerate the Norse gods is how I do it. But when I am, when I am, um, when I am among other heathens, then I will follow how they do it. 
So that is what I have settled on as far as my path is concerned. Um, for people that might be interested in in uh, Norse polytheism, I picked up a really great magazine um, yesterday. It's uh, the Complete Guide to the Vikings. And they do uh, dispel a lot of the myths of the Vikings. But this is a cool cover. I love it. So, um, yes, it, 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 it um, has about, um, it has a little bit about, um, um, yeah, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of really great, um, A lot of really great um, figures. Um, yeah. Um, it's interesting how some of these people are like elevated to sainthood, trying to um, trying to convert people to Christianity, um, which um, um, yeah, like it says here, like this one says, uh, I can't pronounce it. Um, the Aslanic pagan priest and law speaker who around 1000 was tasked with deciding whether the country should be heathen or Christian. After a full day of, of silent meditation, he chose the latter, a decision of both practicality and faith. Um, I do really like the guy. Um, and, uh, you know, he... Um, um, Yeah, so they have some interesting figures in here from history that actually did in fact exist. And, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, but um, it's a really great um, book. Uh, the only thing that I do not like about this, about it, is that they kind of, gloss over a lot of what like St. Olaf did to his own people um, and it the kind of tries to make it not seem as bad as it was but um, it's it's people people have this view of that um, these people weren't as bad back then as people try to make them out to be um, but generally they probably were as bad <laughs> or worse Thing. Like Charlemagne's glossed over, and like, oh, he did this, oh, he 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 had this great legacy that he founded, and they gloss over the fact is that he basically was a butcherer. Um, but most of your most of your rulers were butcherers. Um, so yeah, so that is the path I have chosen. I'm really I'm really excited about what I have decided to do. But I'm going to get off and try to figure out how I'm going to move my dresser by myself, which should be pretty interesting. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, please hope and pray I don't pull my back. That would not be good. But um, yeah, so I'll see you guys around. Bye.